name's Pat Delaney. I'm a owner operator with Trans United, specialized out of Burns Harbor, Indiana. I'm um, here today, I uh, was fortunate enough to be able to uh, assist in a move of the Vietnam Memorial Traveling Wall, the wall that heals. I was able to pick this up up in Wisconsin, bring it down here to Chicago Heights, Illinois. Um, had a real nice parade coming in here and uh, just the, the number of people you see along the route when you're coming through with something like this that are out there with their little American flags and uh, waving and people stopping their cars and saluting and stuff as it goes by. It's uh, finally the uh, welcome home that the Vietnam veterans have deserved for a great many years. I'm, I'm very proud to have been able to assist with this move and uh, actually it's the second move we've done this year. We're the first company to ever do two moves in one year. and. Uh, Look forward to doing it in future years if we're able to. Very, very nice setup. It'll be a, a 370 feet long wall be set up out here, three quarter scale replica of the actual wall that's on the uh, mall in Washington, DC. It's all 58,281 names of all the veterans that gave the ultimate sacrifice of their life over in Vietnam. people don't know is that we're serving in Vietnam as early as 1950. We're serving with the French uh, and we have service members in Vietnam until 1975. So that's 25 years of conflict. From 1950 until 1967, 15,000 American service members are killed in Vietnam. In 1968, that number will double. So what took 17 years? In, in 12 months, all of a sudden that number will double. And so there's a lot of conflict and strife that will happen back here in the United States. You know, when we think about 1968, typically we're really, um, we're really remembering the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., the assassination of Robert Kennedy, but this is all also happening with the conflict that is happening um, throughout Vietnam itself. If you look at the photos above, You'll see that fourth photo of the guys cheering. That is a picture of the POWs coming home in 1973. That's Operation Homecoming. And that very last photo is the dedication of the wall. That's November 13th, 1982. When the wall was first built, it's rumored uh, that someone came down and pushed a purple heart into the wet cement as it was being built. He said, I'm leaving this here uh, for my buddy whose name is on the wall. And so that was the first item left there. To this date, there have been more than 400,000 items that have been left behind at the memorial. They're kept at a facility in Maryland. Um, and we have a few replicas of those items out here with us on the road. You're going to see these postcards, these messages from guys to their families and to each other. These specifically were sent from Eddie Hardwick to his little brother, Georgie Hardwick. Eddie, uh, Georgie Hardwick was 12 years old when his brother Eddie died in Vietnam. He kept all the postcards, all the pictures in a box, and then one day sent them to us so we could share them out here on the road. You'll also see this brick, which is not a replica. That is an actual brick from the Hanoi Hilton, the infamous POW camp that was um, housed in North Vietnam, where so many POWs uh, were held until, um, until 1973, and unfortunately many died there as well. You'll see this picture of a chaplain. There are 16 chaplains whose names are on the wall. Two of them were posthumously, uh, two of them posthumously received uh, the Medal of Honor. This is one of those men. His name was Father Waters. Now, Father Waters, was actually heading up a hill and another group of men were heading down. They looked at him and they said, you know, Father Waters, you need your helmet. And he told them, I carry my protection a little bit higher. That was the last time that they saw Father Waters. Bob Hope in his lifetime did more than 50 USO tours. Many of those tours, I believe nine were in Vietnam. He brought along uh, women who sang, he brought along comedians, dancers, bands, all kinds of people. Uh, for folks to see while they were serving in Vietnam. If you wanna go, we can do the other side. So these are eight POW bracelets. These eight different bracelets tell eight different stories. Some of them are folks who went to Vietnam and never came home. Some of them are folks um, like Harold Kushner, whose wife Valerie Kushner is on this Life magazine, who went to Vietnam, 
survived in, the, in South Vietnam in the jungles, made it to the Hanoi Hilton, and then was eventually returned um, to the United States and are still living to this day. And other folks like Leo Thorsness are who, uh, who have come home and who have recently passed. But Leo Thorsness is also a Medal of Honor recipient. So all of these eight different bracelets have eight different amazing stories. You'll also see a care package here. This was a care package sent to a kid in Vietnam um, from his mother. And unfortunately, he was killed in action on October 31st, 1972, a few days before it arrived. It got sent back to the Postmaster General and brought back to mom. And mom put it in a closet and she shut the door. In 1993, his best friend decided to go down to the wall and leave something for his friend. Mom gave him this care package. Now as Gary, the best friend, was walking it down to the panel that Charles Stewart's name is on, he realized nobody would know what it was or why it mattered. And so he took out this notepad and he wrote him a note that said, mom and dad want you to have these cookies and Kool-Aid. It's time they get these to you and they send all their love. You'll also see items like this prosthetic leg. We always like to talk about, or believe it's important to talk about the continuing toll of the Vietnam War. Because it's not just those who died in Vietnam whose families were affected. It's every single family who had someone serve. This belonged, this prosthetic leg is a replica of one that belonged to a man who served in Vietnam. He was a sniper and he lost his leg there. Now, he came home, he got married, he had two kids, he got a job, and he kind of learned to live his life again. Um, and unfortunately, he died at the age of 37 from causes related to Agent Orange. His brother left this wall, or left this prosthetic leg at the wall because he had always wanted his name to be on the wall and it couldn't because it is, the wall is for those who died in the war itself. You'll also see a picture of a full-size motorcycle. This is the largest item that's ever been left behind at the wall in DC. It's called the Hero Bike and a group of guys in Wisconsin put this together and they said no one will ride this bike until everyone, all of the POWs, all of those who are missing come home. It is still in storage there. Um, this last piece here are the boots. Now, when we talk about the lasting impact of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and the change it helped for, uh, make in our country, we know now to always honor the warrior, no matter our feelings on the war. That was not always clear. These boots were left at, an, at the wall with a message that said, brothers, these are my lucky boots. They got me through two tours on the ground in Iraq. I figured you'd appreciate that more than the garbage man. The truth of the matter is, my generation owes your generation an awful lot. If you had not come home to jeers, insults, and protests, we would not have come home to thanks, handshakes, and hugs. Rest easy, Jets. And they were left at the wall um, with this note as well. Mm -hmm.